Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for this evening, and we're going to be doing a lineup construction video, and for those of you that are here for the first time, let me just stop my screen sharing for a second. I just want to make sure I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Um, for those of you here for the first time, again, uh, we break our DFS uh, videos into two parts. Or earlier in the week, uh, when we had all the props in, I think Thursday, we did just kind of a summary of who the best plays were. And then we do a separate video on just line of construction where we use Saber Sim and use some of the various contest sim tools and sort of some advanced techniques that I kind of work with uh, in building 150 max lineup uh, portfolios. Um, and again, this is not 100% right. I mean, again, I'm learning like everybody else is, but. I, as I share, you know, my findings on how to build these things, I, I like to, you know, try to explain them. And uh, we're all trying to learn. And we're all trying to get better at it and to use these tools at your disposal, um, which are themselves uh, developing day by day, getting better and better. It's, I think it's kind of an, kind of an exciting, um, I don't know, it's, it's an intellectually stimulating way to, uh, to think about DFS is to just focus on the line of construction piece. So in any case, um, I think it is important to just kind of review really quickly, just to make sure that none of my projections and none of my, none of my ownerships are particularly awful. Um, you know, the, these, the best plays are going to be the, the guys with the finishing upside with, with the, with the grappling also. So you have Benoit St. Denis in the five round fight going to be really, really strong. And obviously, you can get leverage by playing Poirier against him. We'll get there in a minute. The main event, both sides are playable in the five rounds. And then you have the, the Spain, who is basically even money to finish in the first round, which obviously makes his metrics really, really strong. And as a result, we're probably going to want to get some leverage against him as well by playing Parisian on the other side. Um, the Ion Kutalaba prop was kind of slow to come out, but we all knew sort of what it was going to be. And both sides of this fight, Kudalaba, as well as, as um, just name, Felipe Lins are extremely strong for their price. So those are going to be really, really great plays. The Blades Almeida fight, just the pricing at 8K or 8,100, whatever it is, is uh, just too enticing to pass up considering the upside they both have. And then you have these kind of middle of the range, middle of the road fights like this, this, the, 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 the Della, the Jack D Della Maddalena fight with uh, Burns. That's probably second tier, but close. And then you have Olize Chuck um, Pereira, which is second tier, but close. And, and the rest are pretty much just kind of, you know, whatever. Like Gamrod is, looks like he has a lot of upside. But he's tough price. You have Phillips, tough price with his metrics. Moreau's tough price with her metrics. Barber, tough price with her metrics. You know, um, and as a result, the underdogs on the other side of those are not going to be particularly strong because, well, first of all, their metrics aren't great, and also the, the aforementioned fighters are not going to be that high owned, so um, you're not going to get a lot of leverage. Um, and the one fight that we didn't really talk about yet, which we'll get into a little bit, is this, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, the uh, the Peter Yan uh, Yudong Song fight, which I I think is going to be under-owned, uh, I have to say. But we're going to see what the Sims come up with. I, people are really, really throwing this fight away. Everybody's kind of on the same page that it's going to be a really good fight, but... You know, the inside of distance line is poor. It's going to be really close. Peter Young's a slow starter and things like that. And the ownership is kind of reflecting that. So if you can if you can get this fight home, you know, I think you should probably get overweight on this if, if you know, if your process gets you there. I'm going to take a quick look at the ownerships before I run the initial builds to make sure that they at least pass the eye test, I guess. So St. Denis, 50%, I and mean, that seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, Asabaya, 34, 34. Gamrot, yeah, these look all like pretty sharp. The ones that I think are going to, are I might want to tweak a little bit. I think Linz might get a little more ownership in 18, maybe. I think the Olazechuk fight in itself might get a little more ownership. Uh, 
I don't believe that thus the Joanne Wood is going to be a full 17%, by the way. I think she's going to be lower. As a matter of fact, I think that Gilbert Burns is going to be higher than 17%. So you could probably tweak this a little bit if you want. Um, the rest of this seems maybe Kuchuk, uh, Kuchagin or whatever, uh, Sir Minara, whatever her name is now, gets a few more percentage points. Maybe Dos Anjos gets a few more percentage points. I hope so, because he's, I imagine he's going to show up as a strong play because at 8% ownership, considering his win condition, as small as it is, is going to come with a whole bunch of takedowns. I mean, that's really strong. And Parisian just has to be higher, isn't it? I mean, everybody's kind of seeing what I'm seeing, that, you know, the, that to Spain is obviously the best play on the slate as far as metrics go, but that in and of itself creates a leverage for Parisian. Uh, not to mention the fact that, you know, the, that there's there's variance. The guy's got, got no starts, and he's got like one minute of total cage time. Anyway, uh, those are the only things I might consider tweaking. So the first thing that we'd want to do is we want to build the full 5,000 lineup set. Um, and then we're going to work backwards from there. Uh, this time we're going to work, we're going to put the 150 max settings in, and we're just going to pile these things. No other rules, no minimums. Well, Let's we could keep a minimum of 47,000, but that's not going to matter. Okay, but let's put 45,000 in anyway. Well, let's you know what? Let, let's for the purpose of this, and we're going to build all 5,000 lineups and see what we what we get. And, and we're going to again sort them in many different ways. We're going to sort them by saber score, we're going to sort them by MMA default, then we're going to run a contest sim and things like that. As this builds, and I am going to pause in a minute. Um, Something to think about is that you do have 14 fights. So when you have a full 14 fight card, I want to say this really carefully, you don't have to be as concerned with dupes, ownership, things like that. Now I say that, uh, uh, but you always have to be concerned with it. You, you don't want to have, you know, hundred dupes. You don't want to have the, the, the highest owned lineups. Um, when you have all these, you know, even when you have all these different combinations that can come in, but I'm just saying that it's just not as likely to get, you know, all kinds of mega mega dupe lineups with so many combinations. And the other thing to to think about as these things are building is these underdogs that you are going to need. Uh, it's not enough just to get the wins. You are going to need to have some ceiling from all of your wins. Uh, and that would be, um, you know, your, your winners and, you know, your, your favorites and your underdogs. So, um, and, and hopefully the lineup construction will kind of take care of that. But what I found is sometimes even the Saber Sim builds, they'll get you too many of these, you know, $7,400 fighters with our, you know, plus 300 to win, but don't really have any upside. Uh, and while you could get away with playing that way on 10 or 11 fight cards, I think 14 fight cards, you shouldn't, you know, I, I don't think you can get away. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause this for a minute while this finishes, then we'll, then we'll get back. Okay. So we just finished running the builds. And again, it's important to know kind of what we're looking at here. So we built 5,000 lineups. Um, using this the 150 max kind of settings. And now it's rating those 5,000 lineups in a certain way, okay? It's rating the top 150 based on first MMA default. Now remember what that is. MMA default is Saber Sim's uh, equivalent of just the most aggressive lineup construction there is. So not to get too into the into the details of what all this is, but it takes a great deal of pride in establishing your 99th percentile outcomes and lineups. And it also gives you a, like adjusted ownership uh, dings and things like that. So th this, I, it, it's funny that they default to this, but the implication is the default settings are what you should use. And this is literally the last, not the last thing you should use, but it's something to consider. In, in 10, 11 fight cards um, where you really need to get aggressive. Um, th this type of build is going to get you the uniqueness you need, um, but it's extremely volatile. Well, actually, I should say volatile. It's just extremely 
unlikely to win. But when it does, I mean, this type of build is going to probably be unique and take down the whole cheese, so to speak. Um, but we're not going to probably dip too much from this setting on a 14 fight card. I just don't think it's necessary. Um, so let's first, before we get into the contest, Sims, let's resort this by kind of the, I don't want to say standard, but the, the the better like 14 fight card setting. And that would be MMA Sim Diversity 10. And again, to get into this a little bit, um, that does not, you know, prioritize just the 99th percentile outcome. Okay. It 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 it, it focuses on the projections sim optimals and then it does ding you for average ownership but not as much as the other one but this is actually a good setting to start with um to build your lineups and when you look at it you know you're gonna see you know the guys that we mentioned near the top of the list as far as as the best plays and things like that um you know as a matter of fact you'll see a good 78 percent uh benoit saint denis and again, I don't really care too much about that whole thing. You know, what does that mean? Uh, I don't mind if I get 78%, 90% or whatever it is. Um, and I almost don't even like to look. Again, as long as my process is good, don't really care too much about the output. Okay. Um, now you could, if you had a take like, you know, Dustin Poirier, I'm only getting 10% of. If I don't like that, I can just always manually up that a little bit, okay? But, you know, that that's that's kind of asking for trouble if you're going to rely on process a little bit. So um, what you could do, really, is just take these and just throw them in there and just kind of be done with it. Uh, however, what you can do is a couple of things. Number one, you can uh, change this min uniques thing, which basically just gives you a little more you know, a little more diversity in your lineups. And when you go down to say Min Uniques 2, you know, what you're doing here is you're giving yourself more outs, like if you're wrong on your, you know, your big takes. But what that's also doing is, you know, giving yourself uh, a portfolio, which does not, you know, it's not as confident. You know, let's put it that way. So you can go down to Min Uniques 3 if you want, if you're less confident. And that is definitely something that that you can do. As you'll see, you know, just for example, it will reduce the ownership of these, your top owned guys a little bit and just kind of just, you know, crunch everything together a little bit more. Okay? Um, so this is actually something you can do as well. So the question is always going to be like, so great sheets, but, but what am I, what am I going to put in? I, I don't know. I mean, this, that's really up to you. I mean, this is, these are different options that you can do. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do on this particular card as another, you know, as, as, as a, as, as one set of options to employ. So let's do a contest set. So we already, I believe, have, we uploaded our contest already, so we don't need to do anything except for change the settings here. So in the 150 max, we're going to change this to field lineups build three. So what that means is that we're going to be simming our set of lineups against this whole group of 5,000, okay? Which I like better, I do at least, than against the default, which is just basically against sim ownership, uh, saber sim ownership. Just put all your eggs in one basket a little bit too much there. So let's uh, save these, and then we're going to run a contest. And this does a little bit better, you know what I mean? Than than your 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 say you know than your straight saber score sim diversity because this is this is is ranking them based on how your lineups are going to do against that field of lineups, okay? And that's just a little more accurate if you're going to you know specify exactly what types of tournaments you're running. Um, so here we go. Let's then go to. Uh, Let's start with the 150 max and we'll put in sort these by risk adjusted ROI. And you'll see it's not that much different. Okay. So wh whether that makes you feel better or worse or whatever, let's go back to mini one, by the way. 
Um, whether that makes you feel better or worse or whatever, it, it, it doesn't really, you know, it's not that big a deal. Um, but here you're getting, for example, 92% Benoit St. Denis if you do a contest. Um, and listen, it's up to you, you know, whether you want to take that type of risk. I won't, wouldn't have a problem with it. But if you wanted to, you know, to get a little less of it, you can go to Min Uniques 3, and then you have a little more of a of a little more of a of a spread out situation. And again, that's just I'll tell you this, the most optimal way to play is to just bang Min Uniques 1, right? Because those are your top choices. But you know, with every reward comes more risk. And you could argue that you want to go Min Uniques 3 or something like that. So I mentioned earlier that. When you have a 14 fight card, you're not going to be as worried about dupes and things like that. Um, uh, oops. You're not going to be as worried about dupes and things like that, but you still have to be somewhat worried, okay? Because you don't want to put in lineups that are, you know, just going to be massively duped, okay? Um, so I do think that we should do some some geo mean filtering um uh to just at least make sure we're, we're doing something to limit them so what that means again is to force in a certain ownership product or a certain geo mean of your ownership to ensure or attempt to ensure that you don't are not do too much so the way you do that is first let's take note of how many people are in this tournament that would be uh 32,941 and I have a calculator like this on the TrueDFS site. Um, but the formula is like pretty easy if you want to do this manually. So you put in 32,000, was it 941? Is that what I said? 32,941. And then six players in a lineup or six fighters. And let's say, you know, minimum like one dupe or max one dupe or something. So you want your geometric mean of your lineups to be 17.6 or less. And as you see, that could be somewhat uh, somewhat troubling if we try to do that. But let's just see what we get. So let's go to um, add filter, geo mean, less than now. If This is if we're really going for the big kahuna, like less than 17. Like you can't even get 150 lineups like that. Okay, and look, and uh, so uh, may, maybe that's a little bit too greedy. Okay, so what would it be to have you know min uniques uh, number of dupes five? That's that's fair. So twenty three would be a geometric mean. So we'll go geo mean select less than twenty three. Uh, and now you can get these. Um, now again, you're not. This is this is. You're, you're now not. You're not getting your top optimal lineups, but you're getting those that are likely to be unique. Um, so this is another way that you can go, depending on how much risk that that you want to take. So what what I sort of like to do is, for lack of any other, you know, lack of any other direction, I want to take some of everything that I just just accomplish. Okay. I want to take some of the MMA default setting, even though, you know, that's a little aggressive. I still like to do it. I want to take some of the regular, you know, uh, sim diversity. I want to take some of the, of the uh, contest sim stuff. And I want to take some of this geo mean stuff. And the other thing I want to do is, is save some lineups to just play the guys that I like and leave money on the table, okay? Um, and that's not exactly the most technical way to play, um, but that's what I like to do. The other thing that I should mention that that I could do, but this particular card is not really suited to that, is if I happen to like an underdog, which is going to be really popular, what I will do is play that underdog and leave money on the table so that the optimizers could get tricked into taking the favorite. Like for example, I really thought about the Gilbert Burns doing it with him because I do like him a lot as an underdog. Um, and he's 7,600. So to play some lineups with Gilbert Burns and leave a thousand on the table, 
I mean, that could you could really just do some damage um, if you get that through. Um, but I don't even think he's popular enough where I really have to do that. So uh, maybe I'll do a couple. So then we get into, again, where it's just like an art, not a science. Uh, so we're just going to just pick like an amount of each thing to do. So let's start with this, this geomean filtered stuff. So let's say we built 30 lineups that are going to be conformed to the geomean, um, whatchamacallit, uh, limitation. Let's, uh, or we can even do 40. And should we do min uniques two for this or min uniques three, maybe? That's probably a good idea, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to play this way. So let's uh, put 40 in there. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use our handy dandy um, favorites tab. This way I don't have to flash that, that, that dupe creator thing and use multiple files. Um, Let's uh well you know let's we want to do that no let's let's uh yeah let's do this let's save these files separately so we're gonna save this one and we're gonna call it something we're gonna call it forty geo means how about that save as we're gonna call it forty geo means remember it's forty. Uh, then we're going to go back to that, uh, to the regular, uh, this is the, this, you know, the regular contest in thing, right? And we're going to go 40 from this, the contest sims. Okay. This has not been filtered. It's not been whatever, but we're having three min uniques, which is fine. So let's save these. We're going to call this 40 sims. So I remember what they are. 40 sims. Uh, then we're going to go to uh, back to that MMA default setting. Just, just in case, we'll get like 20 of those. And we're gonna save these as, money defaults. And I don't think, we probably need to do just regular sim diversity stuff because they were very, very similar to the one where we send. So let's just keep those. So what do we have? We have 40 and 40 and 20. Is that right? So we have 40 sim, 40 geo mean, and we have 20 of these. So let's say we want to build 30 lineups with just the guys that we like. So what, what does that mean? All right. Now, again, this is, you know, at, at your at your at your own risk okay um let's go back and we're going to start all over let's um actually we're not going to start all over we're just going to literally x out guys that we don't like so let's go back to what are we going to do 30 lineups okay well you want to just start all over yeah let's 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 start over let's go back to here Let's upload these. And then we could we could leave 3,000. We could leave 1,000 on the table if we wanted to. And do that Gilbert Burns thing. It'd be pretty cool if we got away with it. So let's see. What would happen if we did that? So let's, let's first take out the guys we don't want, like no Vergara. No Dos Anjos, no this guy, no this guy, no Joanne Wood. Uh, probably don't want Vera either. No really Sonia Dong. I want to keep Jan in just in case he goes for takedowns. Um, don't really want Holland. 
uh, don't want Morose, don't want Barber, don't want Phillips, don't really want Gamrot. Uh, pretty much these guys. And what we want to do is let's build 30 lineups. We want to leave a full thousand on the table. I mean, we're going to get a bunch of dogs if we do that. But let's, let, let's do it. Let's build maximum 49,000. Just build, you know, not a big deal. We'll build 30 lineups. We're not even going to get too fancy. And I presume if we don't get a lot of Gilbert Burns, we're going to force them in. Trust me. So let's see what we got. Um, again, we don't need to. We don't need to mess around with. With any of that. So how much Gilbert Burns do we have? We have, of these 30 lineups, we're getting 13, which is fine. Vera, Almeida, Kutalaba. Oh, awesome. Okay. So we're going to try it. Okay? And we're still getting all this to the St. Denis. St. Denis is just showing up. Then a lot of Vera, which makes sense. Burns. Oh, this, this all looks pretty good. So let's then save these. Save these as... Call these... What are we going to call these? 30 no chancers? Just let's just say 30 uh core. How about that? Because these are these are the these are the guys I have to like. We'll call it 30 core. And we're going to put 1k. That means we know we're leaving 1k on the table. All right. So now what we've done, if we go back to the to the summary here, let's just see. Let's go back into down uh into this file. We did one, two, three, 40, 40, 80, 100, 130. So we actually could use 20 more lineups. So what didn't we do? We did 30 of the core, leave one kind of table. You know what we didn't do? We'll do the core, not leaving one kind of table, just in case we'll leave something on the table. Let's just leave. Ah, we need 20 more, leaving 500 on the table. See, the thing is, I want to get more than 150. So it was 80, 100, 130. What did we not do? Oh, we did not do the regular sim diversity. So we could do that. Let's go back to, to here. We'll go back to regular sim diversity. Could just go 50 of these. That's a lot to leave on the table. Go back to build three. Where we were before. Go back into regular sim diversity. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll put the another 20 from that. Perfect. Okay. So let's uh download these. And we're just going to call these just sim diversity. So what we're doing, okay, is 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 doing a portfolio of different portfolios, and that's what well, made what I call it. I call it twenty cents. I don't want to call it twenty cents. Uh, what did I do? Did I screw it up? Oh man, what happened to my? See, I called now. I call this one 20 Sims. So now I got to go back. <laughs> uh, hang on. What the was 30 core? Oh, I called it 30 core here. Let me just see what these are. This is, this is, so what, what do I have? Totally messed this up, didn't I? No, I didn't. I'm good. Right. I meant sim diversity. This is fine. So 40, 80, 100, 130, 150. So the question is, is how many lineups did I really create? 40, 80, 100, 130, 150. But it's possible 
that lineups that appear in one set also appear in the other. So we have to figure that out. So I have a little tool that will help me with that. So let's start with this 40 geo means thing. Let's just go and let's just make one file with all of them. Now, again, I could have used the favorites thing within SaberSim to do this, but I kind of like using this tool that I created. So we're going to build one file with all of these. Okay. Let's go back to 20 defaults. Back to 30 core, which just leaves the 1K on the table. Finish this with 20, and I know this means sim diverse, even though it says sim, it's 20 sims. So just copy that. And we do this. Okay, so now we have 150, but they might end up with dupes of each other. So I have this little macro that I created. One day I'll get this up there on the site where I can actually see if any of these lineups are duped. Now, again, uh, whatchamacallit, um, DraftKings sort of does that, not exactly. Let's just see. So we're going to put all these guys in here. And then all this is is just kind of a thing where it just examines if there's any duplicated rows. So let's just see, remove duplicate lineups and let's just see if there were any. I imagine there had to be. Yeah, so there are nine lineups that are duplicated. So there are nine lineups that we have to add, okay? So let's, um, we could do that manually after the fact, you know, if like, we, and, and that's actually sort of healthy. Like for example, so let's let's keep, 10 duplicated lineups or nine duplicated lineups. And then we could just manually change them if we wanted to. Okay. The other thing to think about are these nine lineups, whatever these are, whatever these are, are probably pretty strong if they're showing up in different types of builds. Okay. So let's um let's first put these 141 lineups into the contest. Char here. And if you want, we can see who we have, but uh, and that's when, when, that's when I'll, you know, uh, actually, I'm not keeping the dupes, actually. That's actually what I am going to do. So let's I'm only going to play the unique ones. And then I'm going to make dupes of them. You, you'll see. So here are the 140, right? And and here are these others, like dummy lineups that I put in. I don't want those. So we're going to make dupes of these first 10. So they'll show up in the, in the builder. Almost all 10. Um, and just also so we know, we're gonna put these into the into the big buy-ins. I'm I'm not you know I'm gonna do my big buy-ins a little bit later, but just so we save something, and we will save this, and then we will upload it. And so here, like I'm gonna show you, like here's something you can do. So like if you had this. Like, if you wanted, if you went through and said, "Ooh, I didn't, I have too much of this or too little of that," you do have nine dupes that you can work with, and you'll be able to see them pretty easily here. These are the ones that are, you know, there are more than once once repeated. You know, so if it has two, then you can, you know, screw around. You know, if you want to take a little bit out, you could do that, and that's almost definitely what I'm going to do. Um, 
So that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. Uh, just, again, different ways to use these sims, different ways to build lineups. And it really does come down to, to what you prefer. I mean, honestly. So uh, hopefully that helps. Any questions, let me know. And uh, good luck, everybody.